Oh, that snap is so satisfying. Hey everybody, it's Joe. It is time that I update you guys on what I've been doing in relation to 3D printable Lego brick replacements. And while this project has been good, and I think there's going to be some good things coming out of it, it took an interesting turn, and I'm really excited to tell you about that turn. Hey guys, it's Joe, and a while back I was working on a project in relation to LEGO taking down the 3D print models off of Thingiverse and other sites that were tangentially related to LEGOs. Now, that upset a lot of people, and at first I wasn't too upset about it, but people convinced me that we need to have an openness of ideas in particular after those ideas have expired after a certain amount of time. It was one of my better performing videos because I think it happened at a good time and it was a good conversation to have. But now things have calmed down a little bit. However, it did spark for me a project that I have been working quite a lot on. I've got a whole bunch of Legos here or Lego replacement bricks that I need to show you guys. So over here, I have <laughs> a mess, really. I've got a number of things. One thing that I have, though, is these are store-bought Legos. They're not Lego brand Legos. These actually I got at the dollar store in these little three-in-one multi-packs, which I kind of super dig because, one, the designs on these are super minimal but super, super cool. I mean, just just look at the coolness of this of this tank and the the, the minimal parts, but absolutely brilliant design that they use to put this whole thing together. I dig it. I think that this is super cool. Uh, also, you know, a dollar for all of these. Now, some people will point out that if these are not Lego brand Legos, then they're not as accurate. And that might be true, but I kind of don't care. I mean, I'm not, I'm not testing to see how super accurate it is, just if it's accurate enough. Like this, this tells me within a reasonable amount. So I'll 3D print a Lego and I will then stick it to a store-bought Lego and I will try to stick store-bought Legos to it and I will try to stick it to its its own 3D printed Legos and that will tell me if the 3D printer is printing accurately. That has kind of become like my test for testing out 3D printers and some 3D printers do this incredibly well. This was actually on the Zortrax. You remember a while back, I was like, this, this this totally nails it. In fact, it nailed the stud, which it was the only 3D printer I know. These these are practically... Now, these models are models that I got off of the Print-A-Brick archive, which you have to find, but uh, it's, not, it's not out there anymore because LEGO shut down Print-A-Brick. Now, some of them, and these are the ones on the 3D printer on the Cube 2 that... Oops, it couldn't even print a circle. Like, the circles underneath them were very clearly not even circular. Uh, and so, they, were, they wouldn't even stick to themselves. It, th those were terrible. I want to talk about the work that I did to try to make a Lego that would print without needing to be that accurate. What project that I, I called the Gib Brick the generic interlocking brick. One of the first things that I did was I cut little notches in the side of the bricks. Those notches were flex points so that it can stretch and contract if needs be in order to grab hold of the Legos. And that wasn't my idea. That idea actually was from the brick that Legos stole their idea from the Kidcraft brick. The Kidcraft bricks had these and they would actually like slide paper down these and use those as part of the design so you'd stack a whole bunch of them up like this and you'd you'd slide a paper down here and it would look like the door or something when it was when it was in, encapsulated in isn't that cool that's that's kind of neat and so i thought well that would also create a point where it doesn't need to be as accurate where it can stretch and flex that was my first idea the second idea i actually have to give credit to david shorey who if you don't know who he is this man is going to break into fashion without ever having to sew a thing. He 3D prints on fabric and does amazing things. And he 3D printed me an amazing tie. And he he was 3D printing Legos, Lego joints, 
on fabric. But he put, uh, I don't know if you can see it as well in this one. This one shows it. Um, a little notch down the middle of his Legos. Now, I played with a couple of different iterations. You see, I, I played with, with no notch whatsoever. I played with uh, a crossways notch, cutting it in two directions. I wish I hadn't have done it in red because you can't see that worth spit. Uh, I played with uh, doing those... Let's see, what else did I, I play with? I played with doing a single straight up and down. I played with putting the two of them crossways. Uh, here's one of the ones that I did with two of them crossways. This is just such a, <laughs> such a mess. In the end, what I went with was a single slot, but I rotated it 20 degrees. And then just to be cute and clever, I rotated the next one 90 degrees from that. So they all kind of point in a slightly different direction, which, as I mentioned before, I think makes kind of almost a, a logo out of the gib bricks between between the notches on there on the side and the notches in there it creates I, I think a rather iconic look okay so that is the gib brick and that's what I came up with and for the most part this kind of worked it, it, it functioned for what it was supposed to if you had a 3d printer that wasn't super accurate uh, that wasn't calibrated on the X and Y or ex extrusion rate wasn't exactly calibrated right. A gib brick was capable of, even with those inaccuracies, interfacing with store-bought, traditionally manufactured Legos. So that was exciting. I had, I had succeeded. However, at this point, I discovered a couple of things. First of all, there, there was a problem. Even when done well, the bricks were falling apart underneath. And this was because of the nature of 3D prints printing in layers. These small connectors just... They, they, they weren't structurally sound enough to hold together. And so the bricks would start falling apart. And they would still function. But at this point, I started wondering, do I really want to pursue this? Do I want to, do I want to keep trying to basically reinvent the wheel. I guess what I'm making here, instead of just reinventing the wheel, I'm taking the wheel and making a, a studded wheel, which the people in Colorado would really appreciate because it dries well on snow. But if, if you can 3D print accurately, this, this is, again, I went back to the original Legos, and I printed this on the JG Aurora A5S. And while that printer wasn't super well calibrated to begin with out of the box, I was able to make just slight adjustments uh, just by increasing the scale of the model because it already interlocked with itself. And just by increasing the scale of the model, I was able to make bricks that, uh, well, for some reason, these are being a pain in the neck. Now, oh, of course, you're going to be camera shy. Um, there we go. Look at that. Look at how good that is. And that interface with store-bought Legos, and that store-bought Legos like to interface with. And this presented me with a problem. Why, why, at this point, I would have to basically reinvent every, every slanted Lego brick and every Lego brick that goes up and every Lego brick that goes down. And I would have to figure out, you know, some Gibbs version of the stud, which I, I hadn't figured out. And I, you know, I'd have to recreate this bend. I mean, it would be hard, but, but basically I'm, I'm at the point where I would have to recreate the entire Lego catalog. And even if I did that, I still would not be overcoming the limitations of them just breaking because the layers of a 3D print are not as well adhered as an injection molded part. So, so here, here's the problem. The Gib brick, I think, hit a wall. It, it, it is as good as it can be. And it's still not good enough, in my opinion. And I got to thinking, why, why am I, I hitting my head against this this problem? Why am I trying to reinvent the wheel? Why don't I, why don't I just get rid of all of this and come up with with something entirely new, something that takes advantage of what three D printing can do to do something that even Legos can't do? This little brick has uh, tri um, diamond-shaped holes on all of its sides, okay? 
and the top and the bottom. Lego can't do that. Lego can't connect in six different directions. And it has this little connector. Now, like I said, this was the first version of the connector. It's gotten considerably more complex. It's still very small. It's still the same size, but it's got a lot more geometry, and I'll show you that in a second. But you put this in here, turned at a 45 degree angle, which it can go in this way or it can go in that way. And then you, you take another one and you snap them together and they snap together very satisfyingly and they hold well. And what's cool about this is because I did it diamond shape, this will print on any FFF 3D printer on every side of the FFF 3D printer, up, down, bottom, it just needs a little bit of bridging. And in fact, I fixed that in later versions too. It, this is the perfect 3D printed building brick. And I am calling these print a block. I, I, I'm so into this project right now. I've changed it to my Windows background. Print a block. Yes. So, like I said, this was the early version. Uh, things were things were much simpler on these earlier versions. I then iterated this design. I added some considerable more complexity. Um, the the whole got some jigginess going on here, and the connector also got some jigginess to it. And that jigginess serves a number of purposes. One of which is uh, that they will they will now print and hold much tighter with less wiggling. And these were both printed on two completely different printers. Um, and, and they work. They work great. And this, these right here, were printed on that cube too that can't even print a circle. And they were printed with the crappiest filament I have. This filament has been causing me nothing but problems. And while these connectors are a little bit loose, they, they still hold perfectly. What I, what I really like about these connectors, and I don't know why, I, like I'm doing this again, because remember I was like, oh, hey, the gib brick, it kind of, it kind of makes its own, makes its own logo. Well, check these guys out. They also kind of make their own logo. Like that's, that's an icon. That's just beautiful. I absolutely love this. Now, with just these bricks, with just this basic brick, uh, there's so much that we can do. Now, I want to show you. We can we can build we can take and build not just not just these bricks but we can build accessories for them we can make guns and and cockpits and and walker legs for them so that we can make mechs and robots and all kinds of cool stuff. Let me see what I've got in here. Uh, oh, my kids have been playing with these, so they've they've taken them. But you know, there's a whole bunch of of different accessories that I'm playing with. Guys, I think that this project is it. I think that this project is, is going to be... Sometimes they get a little bit tight and, and you need to kind of get a pair of needle nose pliers to pull those out. I'm working on that. I'll see if I can fix that and play with it. But this is so cool, guys. And, and, and you can just start with the basic bricks or you can get these accessories. I can make more accessory packs. I can go to town on these accessory packs. Here, we'll, we'll put this cockpit on there instead. Uh, like like this boom and and there we go we'll take that off and we'll make a we'll make a new little mech right here there we go little chicken walker mech i mean <laughs> how cool is this project now this is absolutely let me see if i can find something to cap off that back so it doesn't look ridiculous here here we go i made this one to just kind of be a cap on there and oh that snap is so satisfying so yes We've got, th th this is cool, these, these printer bricks that I've come up with, I think that this is the, the child of, of this whole debacle with Lego. I think that this is the future of, of 3D printable interconnectable blocks. And they don't have to stay this shape. I can do 90 degree bends and, and, and put corners in there. I can do two goes into one, I can do three goes into two, I can, I can make longer ones, and, and, you know, oh, I'm, uh, sorry, I'm getting excited, I'm totally excited for where this project is gonna go, I almost want to thank Lego for, for sending me down this road, and while it didn't end up where I expected it, I'm really happy with where it did end up, it, it, I, I had to kind of stop trying 
to make a better Lego. And in the end, I made something new that's even better. This is so exciting. This is groundbreaking. And this, this is the future of this project. So thank you guys for joining me on this journey. And the print a block journey is just beginning. So I hope you guys, uh, if you're not already, I have a mailing list. And right now, the printerblock.com is pointed to my mailing list. So if you're not on my mailing list, get on my mailing list so that you'll know about this when more of them comes out. But for now, let's see where this goes. Thank you guys very much for taking this little journey with me. Thank you very much for watching. Hey, if I mentioned anything in this video, you'll find a link to it in the cards and you should check that out. Did you know that I'm social? I've got links to all the socials and you should stop by and say hi. I really kind of enjoy it when that happens. Big thanks go out to my direct backers. And if you want to know more about how you can become that, there'll be a link right here that you can check out. And as always, I want to remind you safety first because I care about you and I'll see you next time. Oh, that's interesting. Classic one there. Going completely without a script here, so we'll see where this goes.